Hey guys, welcome to Moving On TV and today the awakening is, um, I think it's 130. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, the problem with the um, human race and society and the public, I'd say, at the moment is they know nothing about awakening. They know, a lot of people know nothing about ascension. There, a lot of people are stuck on medication. They don't help you to find your creativity, to find your life, to help you to move on without numbing you down and giving you medication, okay? That's, again, personal opinions. I'm allowed to have my personal opinions. So they watch, I've got life. They watch me doing laughter therapy and singing and dancing and, you know, going crazy as far as they're concerned. Not going crazy, entertaining, because I am an entertainer, right? So they watch all of that. And then they see me on The Awakening, usually on Tuesday, because Monday I'm knackered. And they say, you're low, you're depressed. Um, I'm sad, I'm lonely, very lonely, very sad. Um, feel like a robot because I never get touched. Hardly at all. Well, once a week, Martin will come around, give me a hug. That's my life. Now, that is not bipolar. That is not mental illness. And today, I want to talk to you about that. All of you that have been diagnosed, all right? And again, this is my personal opinions, my opinions, my opinions, all right? And you can take them on board or not. Your choice, right? Nothing to do with me. I do not believe in mental illness. I do not believe in labels. I believe we're all shocked. End up shocked and why would you want to poison someone and hurt someone and give them a label and hold them back even more because society has shocked them so much and that's what happened to me i always want to make a film about that little girl that was born who was supposed to be a twin who lost her twin in the womb and she comes into this crazy world trying to negotiate this world on her own. As I say, I was meant to be a twin. Sorry, my hat keeps falling off. And they'll say that I'm, I've got OCD because my hat keeps falling off, right? Um, I was supposed to be a twin. I was born, I was supposed to be born with a brother and my brother died in the womb, okay? I am what's known as a twin, 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 womb twin survivor. All right. A womb twin survivor, which means that I survived and my twin didn't. Now, this causes abandonment issues. And one in 10, or a huge amount, not one in 10, half, nine in 10 women that being diagnosed with mental illnesses are actually womb twin survivors. It means that they were supposed to be twins. And when the baby is born without their sibling, because you see how connected the twins are in the womb, they hold each other, they're part of each other. When you break that and that baby is born alone, they're always going to be looking for that part of them that is missing. Physically, I'm talking about at the moment. I'm not even talking about spiritually. That twin that you were supposed to be born with, that brother, that sister, with me, it was a brother. You're always looking for that twin. And so you're already born with a disadvantage because you're on your own, and yet... The baby knows everything. That's why I don't believe in abortions anymore. 
the baby knows everything, feels everything from a tiny fetus. It hears everything. It experiences everything. It's a real person already. It's a cell, which means it's already got a life. Feelings. It hears everything. It's got senses. And it's been proven. And, and that's how I found out that I am a womb twin survivor or a vanishing twin syndrome. Okay? So that's your first experience. You know, you come into this world without your twin. You've already gone through major grief in the womb. Right? Your first experience of life. And you come out. And you come out to two parents that couldn't look after a puppy, never mind a child. And so your progression is you have a relatively nice childhood, warm, safe, mummy, daddy, grandpa, and some course cousins, friends, you know, sister, whatever, dancing, singing, ballet, and your beautiful garden with the roses and the <laughs> fairies at the back of the garden. And one day it's all gone. Seven years old, you're plumped into a war, okay? I'm just telling you this to show you the progression of shock, okay? And then you get to a certain age. Well, you're plumped into a war, different language, different um, weather experiences. Guys, I, I'm completely balanced, as you can see. Totally balanced. No medication will ever pass these lips, ever. Because I don't need it, because it's my job to connect to spirit, to connect to the soul that I am and find out how to find peace without all of this rubbish, quite honestly, for this condition that could be because you lost your twin, that you went through intense grief, definitely abuse, definitely, all right? So you get to 11 years old and you're lying on, go to the dentist and he sticks his tongue down your, your throat, okay? So again, you lose all your safety, all your certainty. Suddenly an adult that you trust becomes like this predator, this lunatic, this frightening experience. So you go through life, you've gone through abuse, you go in the army, you, you can't make friends, you can't, go, you can't make, find a boyfriend. And then you discover you can sing and everything to you is singing and the only time you get recognition. This is a bit of the life story that I had, right? You've all got your own stories. Other people have had much worse experiences than me, much worse. And so I cannot identify. With, I've met people that have gone through SRA. And if you don't know what that is, then check it out because I'm not going to say it. It's up to you to check it out. I've read about people that were snatched out of their own, the womb and put into another womb and abused the minute they were born and, and gone through God knows what. And these are facts. You need to check this out. I'm not giving you stuff that doesn't exist. It happens in our world. We are experiments sometimes. People are just experiments sometimes. And that doesn't make me crazy. Now, what happens is the system doesn't accept you because you can't hold down a job. You can't hold down a relationship. You don't understand why you feel the way you do. And also you're a creative. You know, there's a joke in how to stay sane in the crazy world when I say, I've got, I haven't got a chance in the hell. I'm Leo. I'm a creative. I'm Leo. Um, I lost my twin. So I had it, it, grief from the time I was born, right? Uh, I'm a Leo. I'm a creative. And I'm a woman going through the menopause who just lost her mother. And that's when I got diagnosed, when I lost my mother. My husband was working all the time. And we had no family. I couldn't hold down a job because I was a child that never grown up because I never understood how to live as an adult because of what happened to me. Couldn't live up to what society wanted. I wanted to sing, I wanted to entertain. That's all I ever wanted to do. But I didn't know how to do it in a balanced way like I am now with moving on TV, whether you call I've got life balanced or not, I don't care. To me, it's very balanced. The laughter therapy and laughter yoga I am a qualified laughter yoga therapist. It does not say I'm high. I'm not high. I am an entertainer. If I'm high and I'm mad and bipolar and need medication, so why do you have so much respect for celebrities, lunatics out there? Because they're actors and performers. And when they finish performing, they take off the suit and they put it on 
the rail and they go back to their lives. And that's what I do. But I, yes, I'm getting depressed and I'm get, because I'm lonely. Because I'm a human that's living like a robot without anybody here except two cats. And I'm being evicted. So don't tell me I'm mad. Change society for me and people like me instead of diagnosing us. Change society. All right. Then you won't have the labels that you're giving people. And so I felt it was really important today to come on to the awakening and explain to you the connection between being shocked and God knows you're being shocked right, left and center. <laughs> it's a bit like if you can, if you can see my eyes, my hair's too short, right? <laughs> Air. Sorry, that was just and that doesn't make me mad either. I have a very creative mind. I'm an artist. I'm a writer. And as you can see, I'm in, I create characters. Baba Bertha has an incredible mind where everything, all the jokes just come, boom, 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 when I'm Baba Bertha. That does not make me mad. When you watch Mrs. Brown, do you say that that actor is mad? No. When you watch Les Dawes, all the actors that you watch, um, comedians, you don't say they're mad. You say they're entertainers. So stop saying that I am mentally ill. Stop saying that that person is mentally ill. No, they're not. They are creatives that have probably been abused physically, emotionally. Um, they've been abused in some way by society. You have not let them do what they love. You have not let them have kids. You have not let them adopt. And I'm not going to go into that. We all know where the kids are going. But if you don't, then check it out. Do some work and help. So the reason I felt I needed to do this is because um, I never I haven't had time to tell you about the abusive emails I got on Friday telling me that I'm mad and go on your medication. One of the most disgusting human beings on the face of the planet telling me that they are watching me and they're going to the lottery to tell them not to give me grants. Most disgusting, vile human being who I feel so sorry for because they're so slow down and threaten me. The and going on about my belief I have system the number. and how I, I am damaging mental people with mental illness, which I don't believe in, because I'm telling them to go out and get a life and do what I do and be happy and joyful, become a yoga therapist or, uh, or become a laughter yoga therapist. You've got to notice whenever I do the laughter yoga, I always do. Very good, very good, yeah. Very good, very good, yeah. Very good, very good, yeah. Now, why do you think that is? Because it brings you back to balance, okay? And then we ground, ha, 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 ho, 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 because we're grounding. So you don't float off, you're grounded. And I do breathing as well. And if I'm jumping around dancing and laughing, it's because I'm happy, not mad. You see, and these people have completely lost their way. They don't know the difference between being happy and being mad. Mad. There is no such thing. Do you know what mad means in America? It means angry. And yes, I am bloody angry. I am raging about the way that the world has gone from that lot. I am raging that I'm being evicted. I am raging that I have no one here. I am raging that I don't earn a living. I'm raging that I'm on my own. Yada, yada, raging, 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 anger, mad. And I'm entitled to feel those feelings. That doesn't make me crazy. It's like that book, you're not mad, you're just waking up. Now, this, there is another type of personality that stalks and sends people, uh, because this person knows me and cares about me, because afterwards they sent me a message saying, I didn't mean to upset you. I didn't mean to upset you after they tried to destroy my life <laughs> and go to the lottery after three days work and, and continuous work for artists like me, not just me, but to bring in money for Vlad and 
all the people are moving on TV, like Paul McDonald, everyone, so they can get paid royalties and they can get paid to work if they want to, to be part of what I'm doing. You know, that's what they're interrupting. They're not interrupting to me. I'm not getting all the money. That money is for a lot of people to have a life during lockdown. So you're a low life and you're vile or you're a ter certain kind of personality. And again, I'm not going to say you're mad because you've probably been abused and been through hell. So I'm not going to say you're mad or mentally ill, but I'm going to say that you're very damaged and shocked like me. Okay, damaged and shocked. Um, and, and because you sent me that message afterwards to say, Lauren, I didn't want to upset you. I'm really sorry. Shows me that you know me. And that is even worse because it feels like maybe you're trying to protect me. Now, in the therapeutic community, people used to have a go at me because they would say to me, uh, I can't protect you. So, I'm, you know, so I'm going to try to discharge you. I can't fix you. So I'm going to try and discharge you. So instead of saying to you, Lauren, you have a right to do what you're doing and grow in your own way. It's up to you whether you like Q or Trump or the Galactic Federation of Light, because that's what they put in the email. Your sick, twisted beliefs are affecting people with mental health issues. Who made me God? I'm not in charge of anybody. Everybody does what they want with their life. It's nothing to do with me. Just don't come near me with your nonsense and your rubbish and your lies. I know the truth. It's in me. But what I'm saying is that person is so twisted in some way with anger or fear or jealous of me in some way. But I'd say it's a protection thing. It's like a disease. Again, I don't want to say disease, dis-ease, dis-ease, all right? As Louise Hay says, a dis-ease. There are no diseases. There is no mental illness. There is no cancer. There are no medical conditions. It's a dis-ease of the mind, body, spirit, of lack of balance. And so is this cold, if you know what I mean, that I can't talk about, caused by imbalances of environment, environment the body being put through hell, through chemicals and all sorts. Baba Bertha does it very well with codes and comedy, okay? Watch her if you don't understand what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is this person, if this is a person that cares about me, then it's even worse and it's more frightening and it's more disturbing for me because then I have to think about the people that care about me and I think, oh my God, is that that person? Is it that? Are they doing this to protect me from myself? because they think that I'm getting mixed up in things I shouldn't be mixed up in. Now that is even scarier. And if you're watching this, then I feel really sorry for you because you're going through, no one who really cared about me would do that because they would give me the honor and respect of knowing that I knew when to back out. And, and, if, they knew, and if they were watching my programs, I did back out. I backed out, but I'm still entitled to my beliefs. I love President Trump and I love Q and all my loyalty goes to them and Isaac Cappy, my mentor, and I love them and I always will and I will support them. And it's nothing to do with anybody else. No one needs to, to even listen to that. They can choose to listen to that and say, Lauren, you have a right to whatever you believe in. It's, it's a free world. We were born free like the song, you know, born free you know you're born free so don't ever try to protect me by hurting me because that is demented whoever you are i don't know who you are and i don't want to think that this is someone that cares about me i even question martin you become paranoid did you do this to stop me from doing interviews with Charlie and Q people, Nicholas and all these great people out there? Well, I'm not doing them anyway because they'll wipe me off Facebook, uh, YouTube. They already wiped me off Facebook. You can't do what you want. There is no freedom anymore. 
So you're, you're just wasting your time. I already took another direction when I left the Kate Shimriani March. And I put it out there so you all know. So if you're watching this and you're calling yourself someone who cares about me, you are a very sick puppy. Diseased, angry, frightened, sad, jealous, frustrated. Get out there, get a life and back down. Because sometimes people do that because they know me and they care about me. Because the next email was, oh, Lauren, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you or upset you or destroy you today. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, you, you hurt me, but you made me so strong. And I talked to the lottery. The lottery worked with me. They know how balanced I am. And I'm coming on here now stronger, able to say to everyone out there who gets diagnosed, check it out. Check it out a hundred times because you may be a vanishing twin syndrome. You may be missing out on vitamins and minerals. You may be bombarded by the rubbish that's coming down from the skies or was until the lockdowns, one of the advantages. Or the rubbish that's in your food. You may need proper food. Uh, you may be frustrated and because you're not doing what you love. Because you can't be mentally, you can't be sick when you're doing what you love. It's impossible because that's when you're in spirit, in God, in love. And that's when you're totally balanced. And if you watch Baba Bertha, that is a character. <laughs> She's mom and dad and my grandmother and lots of people. I picked up a, mainly dad, I'd say, if people watch her, they knew my father. <laughs> and looks the spitting image of my mother. But she is funny. And everything comes through a stream of consciousness to make you laugh and to wake you up in a certain way. So watch her. Yeah. But the thing is, things that I can't say as Lauren, because it wouldn't fit, but it does fit. Get yourself an alter ego, for God's sake. Get yourself an alter ego and do what I do. It's fun. Actors should be acting. Singers should be singing. Come and vote Moving On TV. I give you every single opportunity to be what you can be. And at some point, you'll get paid. People got paid last week. I paid someone royalties. It's happening, right? I'm trying to appeal to you. If you're, you're probably going to watch this because by stalker, whoever you are, you watch everything. And then you'll say, do I look depressed? Yes, I'm sad. Very sad. For God's sake, I'm being evicted. How would you feel? Put yourself in my shoes. I'm sad. I'm lonely. I'm scared. I'm tired. I'm very, very lonely. Very lonely. I'm a robot. I'm living like a robot on Zoom. The only connection I have now is through Zoom. And I really don't know how to grow moving on TV yet. But I'm learning. Today I talked to the lottery again. I have direct contact now, a lovely lady who told me, don't listen to trolls. She knew. She said, we're not going to listen to trolls. So if you try to disrupt anything, you're not going to get anywhere because they're aware of you. They obviously get con people contacting them because they know something's wrong with our world. And quite honestly, the lottery has probably been taken over by Trump anyway. That's probably what's happened now. And he's a good man. And so, and he's a humanitarian. And those who have humanitarian goals at some point will be taken care of when, it, when it's time. So there's no point you trying to hurt me anymore. Because every time you do, I will bounce back because I am connected to this. Now, you don't understand ascension. You're stuck completely on the earth plane and that's why you're miserable and unhappy and frustrated and taking medication and destroying your mind, body and spirit. Because we are ascending, we are going up <laughs> without Bob of Bertha saying that nowhere to go up because we live in a bungalow, right? We are going up. 
which means we're letting go in layman terms. If you're new to this, it means you're letting go of all the baggage around you. And you will get what's known as oscillation. In order to find balance, you will go that way and that way, okay? This is what happened to me in the therapeutic community. And if you don't believe me, you can read it in this book, Simply Amazing. Casey took a chance on me. And he said to me, Lauren, I don't know how you can live without medication, the kind of life you have, the loneliness. I was in a wheelchair. And he said, I couldn't do it, Lauren. And yet I'm doing it every single day, every single day by doing what I love and coming on. To, I'm having singing lessons tomorrow. I'm doing what I love. And tomorrow I will come on with laughter yoga for you. I won't do it today because today is very serious. When I went into the therapeutic community and I can hold the sentence like people said, oh, you're, I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, really? I was talking about oscillation. When I went into the therapeutic community, I could not feel anything for anyone. I was numb. My heart was, chakra was completely closed. I was so unhappy, jealous, frightened, frustrated, the way a lot of you are now. And I went in there in 2010. And bit by bit, my heart chakra opened. So it was all about me all the time. And then suddenly I went that way and suddenly it was all about everybody else, okay? And everything else. And, and, and there was, again, oscillate all the way, okay? So I was there and then I was there. Now, what you do is you come back here into balance. It's always about balance. And that's why we do very good, very good, yeah. Very good, very good, yeah. Very good, very good, yeah back into the middle, yeah? One, one extreme, two extremes, back into the middle. There's a reason for everything that is done. Laughter yoga is therapeutic, okay? It doesn't mean that I'm mad. And again, I'm an entertainer. People, those lunatics watched me. <laughs> they watched me doing I've Got Life, singing and dancing and jumping around, showing off my legs or whatever. And um, for two days in a row. And then I did MOTV and I put on, see, I did, and I was happy and I was laughing and, and I did laughter yoga. And then I came on, did the awakening. And I was probably crying and saying, I'm lonely. Because when the artist comes off the stage, you're using a lot of adrenaline. Yeah. And you're here, you're connected to spirit. You love, you love, you love what you do. You come off the stage, the chances are you'll usually go out with friends. You'll, you'll have a party. Why do people have an after show party? Because they don't want to go home after the show. They'll get low. They'll drop. It's natural. It's natural because you're using all your adrenaline and you're in your space of love and joy because you're doing what you love. And you could go on all night and all day and all night and continuously doing programs, which I expect over Christmas, that's what I'll be doing for people like me because I don't have anybody. I'm not going to be going anywhere. Friends won't invite me around despite what will be happening in this country because they don't. And I won't, you know, so that's how it's going to be. I'm going to be on here, I expect, wherever I'm living. And I'm not going to say anything because the stalkers will... Try to destroy it for me. So from now on, I'm not, I will say what I feel I want to say here, what is good for me. And I'll be very careful who I tell people about where I'm going or what I'm doing. So then I can ascertain, okay, who did I tell I was moving? And did I give my new address to anybody? Oh, yeah, I gave it to Martin. <laughs> I gave it to, okay, all right. So they're the only people that know. So who, this doesn't match, you know, okay? All right. There is no contact form and moving on theatre anymore. If you want to contact me and abuse me or say something nice, you've got to give a proper email address. You can't give no one and nothing or um, smelly bugs or whatever it is you call yourself, boots or stuffy nose, you know, and all the nonsense. You can't do that anymore. 
And you're obviously not coming from a charity because as the lottery said, you wouldn't demean yourself like this. You're obviously a very frustrated, who was it just said, you need a hug. You need some love. Your heart chakra is closed. You feel you've got, or it's too open. As I said, it's all about balance and you think you're protecting Lauren, which is nonsense. I had this discussion with Martin today for the tenancy agreement. He, he wanted to sign it on his own. He wants to protect me all the time. And we're not married. Well, we're married because we're not divorced, but we're separated and I'm happy and he's happy. But we, you know, we, we're moving together because we're still in, in name, but we're not going to be living together. And so I said, why do you need to sign the tenancy agreement without me? Oh, because I want to protect you. No, it doesn't work because then if they try to evict me, I don't get a notice. Like I didn't get a notice here from Mark. Mark never told me, but that's what people do. And they see me getting myself into trouble, losing my Facebook, losing my uh, Instagram. And they think, oh, I'm going to protect Lauren. I'm going to scare the life out of her and tell her that I'm in charge here and I'm watching her. And I'm going to, to demean her work and I'm going to destroy her reputation. Yeah, because it's my job to protect her. No, you're damaged. That's not how you protect people. You're damaged. Very damaged. You need to go to codependency if that's how you love, because you're damaged. You're shocked and you're damaged. And don't come near me ever until you've sorted yourself out because my heart is wide open. And if someone really believes inside because they've had such a difficult life, that the only way to protect me is by hurting me. That's like that munchinals and thing with the mother. Do you see where I'm coming from here? People do it. Mm -hmm. People always tend to put me either on the pedestal or try to protect me. And that's the problem that my, when you get an email that says, Lauren, I'm sorry, I don't want to hurt you. Then it's really scary because this is someone who knows me and apparently cares about me. That hurts. That they would go out of their way to destroy my reputation, to destroy my life, to destroy the lottery grants that I worked for a whole week with Jenny, who did it for me. I talked to her and I put, brought it all together and it includes so many people that I love and care about and I want to help them with their dreams, but I will never destroy their lives and their jobs and their careers and their livelihoods because I think they're going in the wrong direction. What right have I got to do that? They are free. If you're watching this now, because I know you probably are, because you watch everything I do, you know what I do, because you keep reporting me to the police. Do you know that the same person reported me? They rang up and said it was me and said I was going to hurt myself when I was singing on YouTube. So you need to really get a life and open that heart of yours. And I, I forgive you because you obviously have been brought up in a very demented way, a very sick and twisted way. And if that's how you protect the people you love, is that what you're going to do to yourself? So don't, don't put me on pedestals and don't, don't protect me. That's the other thing. They put me on pedestals and I fall every single time because I'm human. You put a human on the pedestal, they will fall. Because the only way we can find our balance, what happens to a child? When a child is trying to walk, they fall down a few times. Well, guess what we all do? 
And then at some point, when I was trying to walk again, when I was on the crutches, it took a while for me to be able to walk again. And I was wobbly. I didn't fall, thank God. <laughs> Actually, I did. I fell on my bum. <laughs> I'll never forget it because Martin couldn't get me up. <laughs> I was trying to get me up. <coughs> um, yeah. We had to get the bath seat and put it underneath me and then push it and lift it up to get me up. Because <laughs> I couldn't get up. I'm in a wheelchair. And I was trying to learn how to walk. So when you're trying to learn how to live in this mad world, crazy, angry, frightened world, out of balance world, where people that have gone out there and done terrible things to children and innocence, I've given me a label and you a label and are putting all this rubbish into your beautiful, beautiful immune system. God given that you don't need anything except to understand yourself better, to get rid of the abuse, to deal with it, to eat properly, to do yoga. Look, I mean, look at David Elam's for God's sake. High spectrum autism, no medication because he does yoga and stays in the now. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm very lonely. And yes, I'm sad. And I was very happy on the weekend because I oscillate in order to find my balance. I'm not crazy. I'm balanced, but I'm lonely. I'm sad. I'm frightened. I'm angry. And I'm also happy on and off. That is possible. It reminds me of in the therapeutic community. I wanted to have feta cheese once when they went shopping. And this person was so bipolar, black and white. And this is the person that's writing to me because they cannot understand the bit in the middle, you see. They don't understand the human nature because it could be someone from the therapeutic community because it's ringing bells here. Because they said I was mad because I wanted feta cheese. And they thought, no, you can't have feta cheese. We have yellow cheese. Oh my God, we have to have yellow cheese. Lauren wants white feta. I'm mad. And they used to say I was schizophrenic and heard voices because they would not admit that they, they actually called me and spoke to me about going to a meditation. So Lauren is schizophrenic and hears voices. Well, I have news for you. If you hear voices, you're probably a clairaudient. If you see things, you're probably a, a clairvoyant. If you feel everything like I do, you're probably a clairsentient. You are a medium. All right? I can't go on forever because you won't watch this. But I hope I'm getting my message across, all right? So please watch this. And I deserve an apology. If you've got a heart, you, will, you, you try to apologize. But you need to show yourself. Show yourself to God first. Do amends. How did I ever hurt you? How do I trigger you? It's always about me, you. I'm your mirror. The minute I trigger you, I'm your mirror. Why are you so scared of me? Why when you look me in the eye? That's why I don't wear glasses anymore. The, I do, but when I try not to as much as possible because... The eyes are the mirror of the soul. So why won't you look me in the eye, some of you? What are you so scared of? Yourself. That's all you're scared of, is yourself. And they forced me to sit with myself in the therapeutic community. And if you're from the therapeutic community, you will remember this. I was forced to sit a whole night with my feelings without ringing up for support. And it was terrifying because I was scared of me. I was scared of me. I was scared of what I might do to me or to something else, someone else, me. And I, I just sat with those feelings. I let it overwhelm me and they went. I came back the next day and I said, thank you. And bit by bit, I got better, and better and better. And I've never, ever gone backwards. But quite honestly, I'm very grateful I was uh, put into therapeutic community because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here now. However, I am not grateful for being diagnosed. It would have been kinder to have given me grief counselling for losing mum 
it would have been kinder to have given helped me to find a job entertaining like activities it hurts and the reason it hurts is that i couldn't work with people maybe you could have taught me social skills and communication skills and how to deal with my temper and it hurts it hurts because no one ever did that but the therapeutic community was the best thing in the world for me completely changed my life gave me showed me the truth and that's what we need now that's what I'm trying to do with moving on TV and moving on theater, which is all one. A friend, a good friend, gave me the name Glory, who may be watching this, said to me, I hope they are, said to me, you need to incorporate moving on TV and moving on theater. And so I have. We all work together now. As you can see, Vlad, Martin, Luke, Manuel, Emily, they're all part of moving on theater. We all work together. And um, so it's all come together in one. In a way, I'm creating a therapeutic community with Moving On TV. I've got life entertainment. I bring you on. You talk about your dreams. There's the structure of getting up on a Sunday and knowing this is, I've got my schedule. I'm creating a schedule for Moving On TV for the week so you know what's going on. So you can choose what you want to watch, you know, because I know I plonk things on you. And maybe that's why you're not watching. And we've got the big project leap up and down with Unicus in the air with Baba Bertha. Um, I couldn't talk at all after her, her running the show for, for a whole day. So I've got to be very careful with that. And so everything is in one place, like a therapeutic community. So if you're watching me now, for one minute, do not judge me. What am I teaching you? And why are you so scared to think that this is about you? And no one is mad. So don't ever, if anybody ever calls me nutter or mad, I don't, I, I say to them, just shut up. I am not a nutter and I'm not mad, I'm angry. Those who are doing what they're doing to children and what they've done to you and me, that lunatic, those pedophiles, those awful people, they are the ones that completely and utterly dementedly mad, demented mad. And whoever is sending those emails because they want to protect me, you've got big problems, big issues. You need to sort yourself out and quickly. Well, because I've got a solicitor, as I said, and we will find you if we have to. You can't send con uh, them through moving on theatre or Hope, Hope Glory anymore. If you want to contact me, you have to do it with dignity, with a name, or you have to come and talk to me or else just go and work on yourself. Yeah, work on yourself. I don't give a shit if you take medication or not. Nothing to do with me. It's not my body. Up to you. I don't tell anyone not to take medication. It's up to them. I tell them that ideally, if you do take some, read the labels. And if it says death, then come off them quickly. But if people don't want to, that's up to them. But my job is to say that you don't need it. And that my experience and lots of people's experience, like David Elam, you can find them everywhere. High spectrum autism. Takes nothing. Does yoga and the power of now. And yes, we have breakdowns. Of course we are. We're human. Look at the world. We're lonely. And you don't give a shit. You never come and visit, none of you. <laughs> those of you that might be sending those emails I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those of you that ring me up and talk to me on the phone and keep me going like Martin and Sharon and Janie and Angie, Martina, uh, Nikki, my, uh, Michael, Paul McVeigh, <laughs> Michael, uh, all these lovely, lovely souls that I can pick up the phone. They And uh, Gina, my lovely new, my lovely uh, Gina, new friend that came into my life. And, and Vlad and Luke and Emmanuel and Emily and lovely souls that I can ring or Unity Prayer Line, the Samaritans, people you can ring and of course Coda Outreach, which is invaluable. There's a Coda Outreach. 
look into it. It means that if you can't control yourself, instead of sending an email to an innocent person, go on code outreach and say, I don't know what to do. I want to really, really protect this person, but I'm going to destroy their reputation in the process. Go to code outreach and say, I'm totally powerless over my actions and my codependency. That's it. I'm going to end there. I love you lots. Uh, please subscribe, share and like. That's the website. You can go on there and you can check lots of programs on there. You can go on there and you can buy Vlad's song, The Praises of Your Love. Um, please donate to the uh, our, his fund, the Hardship Fund, where he can get through the lockdown without benefits necessary. Yeah, come on board, Moving On TV. I will come on on Friday and tell you more about the weekend. Um, um, but all you've got to do is get a pair of knickers for Boba Bertha and jump up and down at certain times. There is a poster. And please, as I say, help me grow. Um, come on board with your dreams. Contact me at Lauren. No. <laughs> Sorry. Contact me at movingontv1 at gmail.com. Um, it's all down below. I love you lots. And as I say, if you really, really have something to say to me, the door is open. My heart is open. Come and see me. I don't like wearing these because the light bounces off of them and I can't, you know, it's just glary. And that's it. All right. That's it for today. And don't mind, make my brown eyes blue anymore, if you know what I mean. Please. Don't make my brown eyes blue. Thank you.